Welcome back everyone to our second example video for sine trig substitution. Here we have the integral of the square root of 9 minus x squared and that's divided by x squared. dx, if you look at this 9 minus x squared statement, notice you can't really split up the root because it's separate terms and there's no way to do u substitution. You might see this as a statement that looks like a squared minus u squared and that would tell you that this is a sine substitution. And remember with sine substitution, we let u equal a sine of theta. So if you notice here that a is equal to three because three squared is nine and u is equal to x, then our substitution is going to be x equals three sine of theta. And then remember, we will also need an expression in terms of theta for dx. So we take the derivative of three sine theta we get three cosine theta d theta. All right, so those will be our substitutions. First, we'll build our right triangle. This statement right here, my original substitution, if I get it in terms of sine theta equals, sine theta is going to be x over three. If I divide both sides by three, and remember that sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, in a right triangle. So my x will be over here and my 3 will be the hypotenuse here. And then if this squared plus this squared equals the hypotenuse squared, then we will actually get this side being the square root of 9 minus x squared. You can work that out if you'd like. And we'll use all of that and write everything in terms of theta. So we'll have the integral of square root 9 minus, now if x is 3 sine theta, I need to square all of that. So I actually get 9 and I get sine squared theta. And then in the bottom here, if I just have x squared, then that is plain old 9 sine squared theta again. dx, we'll write it out to the side, so that's going to be 3 cosine theta d theta. Okay, so some things we'll do here. First, I'm going to go ahead and reduce my three and my nine. So I'm gonna make this a one and make this a three. And for now, I'll go ahead and bump out that three on the bottom. So that'll be a one third in the front. I'm going to um, go ahead and leave this and then talk about what to do with this under the root. So this is not exactly a Pythagorean identity under the root, but it is a multiple of one. So if I think about from here, just reducing my three and my nine, uh, what we could do is factor out a nine in the root. So we could go ahead and say the square root of nine, and then we would have a one minus sine squared theta once we factor out nine. Okay, while I copy down the denominator, and my cosine theta d theta. So think about what's going to happen. We have a couple of things that are gonna happen in the root here. One of them is that I know the square root of nine, so I can go ahead and pull that out. So if I pull out the square root of nine, that's gonna be a three on the outside. The three is going to reduce the one third, so we actually won't have a constant out front anymore. And then also, this one minus sine squared theta, remember we think of that now as a Pythagorean identity. That's the whole point of trig substitution is to create a Pythagorean identity. So we get cosine squared theta in the root. We still have a sine squared theta on the bottom and a cosine theta d theta out back. If we reduce this, we're in a right triangle. So that is positive. We don't have to worry about absolute value there. We get a cosine there, we get sine squared theta, and we have another cosine theta, d theta. So if you think here about combining these cosine terms, I'm gonna actually jump over here and say we have cosine squared theta over sine squared theta, d theta. And now once we're here and we need to figure out how we're going to do this integral, you might look at trying to do a u substitution with sine is u, but then you kind of have like a du squared, and we don't ever want du squared when we're doing u substitution. Um, so what we may do, I think, in this one is actually go ahead and turn this into a statement involving sines. So what if I write 1 minus sine squared theta on the top? 
over sine squared theta on the bottom, d theta. And then I go ahead and I split each term, right? So in other words, I have a 1 over sine squared theta, and then minus sine squared theta over sine squared theta would just be 1 d theta. So that might be a little nicer if I can figure out how to do this first part, right? So then let's go ahead and instead of thinking uh, 1 over sine squared theta, maybe we think of cosecant squared theta. Sometimes you have to play around with it, right? And figure out what is going to work. And so this is close to a derivative of cotangent. It's off by a sine. So this one we get negative cotangent of theta. And then if I have the antiderivative of 1, that's just going to be theta plus c. So now let's look back at our triangle and notice what we might need from this. So first of all, we'll need cotangent of theta. So think about cotangent of theta is going to be the adjacent over the opposite. It's the reciprocal of tangent, right, which is opposite over adjacent. So in this case, we will get the square root of 9 minus x squared is our adjacent, and our opposite is going to be x. So that's what we will replace cotangent with minus theta. If I want to know what theta is, remember our original substitution was that sine of theta is equal to x over 3. That was the original statement that we had. So I could then figure out theta, I think, if I say that theta is equal to the inverse sine of x over 3, right? If we take the inverse sine of both sides. Okay, taking those things and replacing our theta expressions with them, we'll get negative root of 9 minus x squared over x for our cotangent theta minus the inverse sine of x over 3 plus our constant of integration. Okay, that's our second example. Check out our third example and our tangent and secant substitution videos as well. We'll see you in the next one.